Welcome to Juice's Arthropods. My name is Juice, and welcome to our Halloween spooktacular double feature with the two. Uh, well, originally you guys wanted specifically only ghost mantids, but a lot of people also wanted to see the Halloween hissers. So I'm changing our format up just a little bit today. We're going to have a little fun with it for our specifically Halloween double feature. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go very quickly through both of them and hopefully uh, not have a 30 minute video here. Um, so the format's going to change a little bit. We're going to talk about pros. We're going to talk about cons. We're going to discuss a fun fact. We're also going to talk about should I buy these? Are these a pet that I myself might like? As well as what am I going to need when I purchase them and how spooky are they? So let's get into it. So let's talk about Elliptorena jadvanica, which is the Halloween hisser. Um, let's talk first about the pros. Well, the pros are they look like pumpkins. <laughs> That's absolutely adorable. Additional pros to these guys are if you're very if you're familiar with roaches, these are the easiest of roaches. Now, their diet can kind of get complicated at times only because they don't seem to eat um, as many of the things that a typical Madagascar hissing cockroach will, but for the most part they do. So I'm not going to tell you any different about how to take care of them. If you have dubia roaches or if you have Madagascar hissing cockroaches, the pros are they're going to eat the same thing. Just one thing to note, don't panic if these guys just look a little bit skinnier than your Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Uh, what you can see here is, um, I believe, a female. In fact, hold on. Correct. You have a female here, and then you have uh, the male. Now, the males are pretty obvious for these guys. Pros are the males are pretty aggressive as far as a roach can go, which means you may notice how he's not hissing as much, but about three minutes prior to me grabbing him, he was not thrilled with me. So the pros are the hissing is absolutely the cutest thing ever. Now, another pro is this amazing looking Halloween look here. I mean, you can see there, they're, they're pretty chill. An additional pro is the fact that they're pretty chill. They're not as um, fast as other roaches. This is crucial when you like roaches as much as I do. I have some roaches that will bolt on you and you will never find them again, which is kind of not great when you live in a house that, say, um, is connected to a neighbor like a duplex like mine is. Now, an additional piece to the pros are these guys are essentially the easiest creatures on the planet to feed. I just want to go back to that for a second. You can essentially feed them any food scraps that you have. Just avoid certain foods. If, for instance, you have reptiles like a tortoise, these guys will eat everything plus some proteins. And last pro I want to kind of mention with these guys is, um, do you see just how, like, they're super easy to hold? This is really nice if you're the kind of person that is very tactile. Now, you may notice I'm wearing gloves. That's just simply because I don't like to uh, bring on any kind of like external uh, anything into my, my habitat. So when I'm holding these guys, I typically, because they're not going to me, they're going to you. Um, I like to just wear some gloves or something like that just to make sure that I'm not adding any contaminants into the, to the actual um, bins that I have for breeding. But you may notice these are very easy to hold. I mean, this male is... <laughs> a little bit more interested in this female than i'd like him to be <laughs> but you know they're not running they're not doing anything they're chilling they're just testing out everything kind of tasting the surface they're on identifying what is this it's weird right when you can i mean you could they can these guys can feel the blood coursing through my veins so like it must be very bizarre to be any kind of creature this small because when you're holding them they're like what in the hell is this that's holding me so overall pros easiest pet on the planet if you like or have had madagascar hissing cockroaches these are going to be exactly the same and we're going to actually get into how similar they are here in a little bit so now let's talk about cons when it comes to cons um there's two I mean, there's really only two cons to these. The cons for anybody who doesn't like roaches is a lot. Like, the, I think more people are afraid of roaches than they are of spiders, which is crazy to me because only five species to 15 tops um, could be invasive in your house at any given time if you're living in the United States, whereas there's, you know, 4,985 that can't. So I would say the biggest con for me, if I'm looking at it from a perspective of when I purchase these kind of uh, creatures, is number one when you breed them so the madagascar hissing cockroaches or any of the hissing cockroach family well first off he's actually i'm gonna go with this con first because he's doing it to me right now the number one con for these guys is the males 
get these really brutal spurs on their legs. I don't know if you can see this. They're sharp and they will do this thing when you've upset them. They'll breathe in right through their spiracles and then they'll force air out of their abdomen. That's They're not really breathing. They're just basically capturing the air into a pocket. And uh, this is something that's very unique to these types of species. Not many can do that. And that's really cool. But if that doesn't work, they're going to do the next thing, which he keeps doing to me, which is fantastic, which is they try to dig down. They try to hug it really tightly, whatever branch or thing that they're on. So what they do is they take these. I'm going to flip him upside down. I put the female back because he was just not leaving her alone. Um, do you see? Like, I'm a big person. He can grip onto this. And thank God I'm wearing the gloves. And these little mean bastard legs of his, they can cling into you, which means they can also try to shove those barbs into your skin. Now, he's not trying to do that. He's using, he utilizes those barbs for uh, mating as well as for like a light defense. If he can press his body against something really, really tightly and kick those legs back with those barbs, nothing's going to try to pry him off. It's just not going to be worth the snack at the end of the day. But to you, you have skin and you're soft. And unfortunately, it hurts a little bit. So I would just say when you're dealing with the males, that can be a con. Now, the second con with these guys ultimately is that when they have babies, if you add external heat or if you're from a state where it gets above 85 degrees, they don't normally breed uh, without an external heat source. But in my house at 75 degrees, they do did breed and the very second i brought them outside into the garage where it hit that 80 uh, 80 degree threat 80 degrees threshold what you will find is now you're going to have some babies about 20 to 30 at a time per female that's impregnated and that wouldn't be that big of a deal it's cute they're adorable little roaches but this con is that the babies can sneak out of even the tightest little holes that you imagine that you've to protected yourself from so for something like these babies, let me see if I can take... <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't know if you can see the, the picture or the babies here. You need something that can lock. Otherwise, if you have, say, a critter keeper or anything like that, or even a tarantula cribs, if tarantula cribs, if you're watching this, um, I really love your one snap-on lid. But for the non-snap-on lids, these guys can hop through it. You guys are making them for tarantulas, not roaches. I get it. So what that means to you is you may have had, say, six females like I have, and then all six of those females have babies. And then you open the container and surprise, you now have 120 little babies everywhere that you're trying to wrangle. And they're fast and they're skinny and they can get through tiny little cracks and they can climb plastic and glass. So just keep that in mind. That's a huge con. So time for a fun fact. Um, fun fact is, there's only one species that's commonly called the Madagascar hissing cockroach, but there's actually nine different tribes of different kind of hissing cockroach. All nine of those are from the island of Mad or the islands of Madagascar. And what that means is common names, you know how I'm often complaining about them? Well, we call these Halloween hissers, but we call the Gramophorina portensa or portentosa, I guess. We call those the Madagascar hissing cockroach, but all of them are from Madagascar and all of them are hissing cockroaches. So fun fact is, every time you say that, you're actually speaking of nine different species. So, you know, maybe we should just remove that entirely from our lingo from the going forward. So should I buy them? Yeah, of course. I mean, absolutely. I guess the ultimate question for you is, if I'm deciding if I want to buy them, what am I buying them for? If I'm buying them to feed a reptile? No. You're, what, what is wrong with you? There's like a thousand different feeders that you can choose from. Pick something else. Madagascar hissing cockroaches or any of these cockroaches are not for feeding. Also, they're stupid expensive if that's what you're doing them for. And if you just kind of get your kicks by having your reptile beat the shit out of a, rep, uh, a hissing cockroach for 20 minutes, because that's what ultimately ends up happening rather than being smashed in one nice crunch, I guess. Um, don't do that. Don't buy from me. I don't want that. These guys make great pets. They live for a really long time. Should I buy them? Yes. If you have a child, for instance, and you want them to have a nice, easygoing pet that they can have for a couple years just to test out their metal rather than getting them a cat, which takes 20 years, then these guys are perfect. 
They act just like a cat, meaning that they sleep most of the day and they take care of themselves most of the day. All they're doing all the time is grooming, sleeping, and chilling. So perfect pet for that. Another thing is if, if you're the type of person that wants a pet that's going to be out constantly, maybe not for you. Because what they're going to do is the cork bark that you buy for them, they're just going to kind of hang out under that all the time. I see these guys from time to time. Every single time I you know clean the bin or I feed them or anything like that, I just lift up the cork bark, see them, hold them maybe if I'm feeling, <laughs> feeling like it. And then they otherwise they don't do much. So as far as pets goes, this is the easiest pet you could ever have in your entire life. So should I buy them? If you want an easy pet, yes. If you want an exciting pet, not at all. So what will I need if I want to purchase these guys? You'll need the roach, and then you'll need some dirt in a bin, and atop of that bin, you're going to need a secure lid. Because if you have a male and a female roach, any mistakes, you now have a male, a female, and a billion little baby roaches. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend, if you go to a container store or anything like that, you get something that says water tight. That watertight bin, and you can modify it. In fact, if you check out up here, I have an isopod substrate video that you can watch, and I can show you exactly how I do it. You can get these nice little one-inch holes or two-inch holes that you can drill into the side of basically anything plastic, and it allows you to make sure that there's proper ventilation while not destroying the security of the bin itself. This is crucial because when you decide to purchase these guys, you need that watertight bin because, as I said with one of my cons, the babies can escape. Now, let's say hypothetically you just buy one. You don't need all that. You can just buy any regular cage that has a top on it. The reason I say a top, because they can climb up, as I said before, plastic, glass, and basically any surface known to man. So they will be able to clearly get up there and escape from you. And while that's adorable that they're going on their own little journey, there's a whole lot of horrors that the world have for them. And you just obviously don't want them to be hurt. So definitely make sure to get that. You want some substrate thickness. So I would say three to four inches or just use three fingers or four fingers or however you want to do it uh, for substrate. The reason for this, they sometimes just like to bury themselves if they're hot or cold or anything like that. If they're warm, they're going to bury down. Don't put your heater on the bottom if you do want to breathe them. Put it on the side, and that way when they decide to go down, they're not cooking their idiot little brains. Now, another thing you're going to want to purchase for them is food for them. Or don't. It doesn't matter because, honestly, they'll eat dog food and they'll eat any scraps for any kind of vegetable or um, non-citrus fruit at the end of the day. But other than that, that's it, man. I've had one of these get escape into my garage when I was taking care of one. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I was taking care of them, cleaned out of one of the bins, was putting them into another one, a rehome. And then one of the Madagascar hissing cockroaches, I came back into the garage three months later, and it was went from a baby, apparently, when it was in there, to a full-grown adult. And it had survived on its own. So when it comes to hardiness in these guys, it's they're, they're roaches. They're going to be fine. So that's really all you need. A bin, some substrate, some food and water, and that's all you need. So how spooky are they? Well, that really depends on who you ask. If you ask me, not at all. These guys are the pumpkins as far as I'm thinking. Unintentional pun there. But these guys are completely harmless. They can't, unless you were a leaf or some organic butternut squash that they feed on, um, you're completely safe with these guys. They are the most harmless creature on the planet. But are they spooky? No, not really. They just look like giant beetles. I mean, they're, they're pretty chill. Some people, though, this is their <laughs> nightmare. So prepare that. These make really cool Halloween pets, though, just so you know, because how many people in your block have Halloween-looking cockroaches in their house? Probably not many, so if Spooky is what you're looking for, then pick them up. They're kind of like a low-key PG version of Spooky. If you're not interested in that, then don't. So let's talk about the ghost mantis, because that's what the whole point of this video is about, right? Is the ghost. It's Halloween. It's awesome. So we're going to talk about first the pros. So with the ghost mantis, when we were originally talking about mantids in my last video here, there's a lot of cons. The benefit, the biggest benefit, which is a huge benefit and almost completely resets all the pros and cons of the mantids, is the ghost mantis does not require the high humidity standards. Between 50% humidity and 90% humidity, these guys are going to be totally fine. They might have a little bit of different colorations, but for the most part, they're going to be totally fine. 
These are the easiest when it comes to the actual humidity requirements, besides the more novice level like the Cal uh, Carolina uh, Manted or the Chinese Manted. So huge pro, which like I said, that's a huge con when it comes to Manteds. They're gonna be way easier when it comes to the humidity. Another large pro, these guys get pretty big. I would say about four to five inches on average for the females. So they're a pretty sizable mantid that you're gonna have be able to hold and not be worried about smushing them every time you decide to hold them, which is really cool, which also means you can offer them larger prey. Another pro, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later, is the colorations. All these guys are trying to do is just look like a dead leaf, which is pretty sweet. So you get a lot of really cool color forms that you will acquire from these guys, whether it's just the regular brown color or even like a deep vibrant green like you can see in some of the, real, uh, the film here. So that's a huge pro. And the last pro of these is they've got the chillest personality of all the mantid species that I've come across. These are a very good species to have but I do highly recommend maybe trying a different species before you acquire them first. So for cons, these guys unfortunately receive the same cons as every other mantis, and that's a lot of care for a very short-lived creature. You're gonna have to feed them pretty consistently. They're gonna have humidity requirements where some species just really don't. And unfortunately, they are really vicious hunters. So they're gonna need a pretty consistent amount of feeders which can get expensive. So I would say ultimately the biggest pro for these guys is the fact that every couple days you're going to have to feed them. It's pretty easy to tell when you need to feed them because their abdomen is going to shrink. So if you notice that it's looking a little flat, it's time to feed them. So I would say for these, I'm feeding them every two to three days, which can mean a lot of your wallet. Now, that's only one cricket at a time, which doesn't seem like much, but if you have, say, 60 of them, that can be that can add up pretty quickly. So just keep in mind that they can't they do require a lot of feed. Now the other con is if you don't if you're not feeding them something more of like a spastic creature, I mean like a cricket or something like that, they're just gonna ignore it. Unlike the orchid mantis, these guys are just not gonna be like the thrill of the hunt. They're gonna wait there very patiently until something comes up next to them and then they're gonna eat it, which means sometimes if you wanna feed them anything exotic, like say a hornworm or anything like that, you have to literally hand it to them because otherwise they're not gonna pay attention to it whatsoever. Last con for these guys is they do require kind of a larger container because of the fact that they do get kind of big. So just keep that in mind that you might spend a little bit more money than you would for say a smaller mantis on these particular species. So let's talk about our fun fact. Two fun facts. These guys come in a crazy amount of coloration. Imagine the color of leaves. There's a color of every single type of that, except for I think the reddish pink of like say a um, rose petal or anything like that. These guys come in all sorts of colors from yellows to greens to browns. It's just like you name it, they all ultimately come into it. The second thing that's really cool about these guys is they have the most insane heads. Have you seen them? Here, let me show them to you. Look at this thing's head. What, what's going on there, buddy? What's going on with that head? It's weird, right? Because that's what's cool about these guys. They not only have different patterns from greens to browns to yellows, they'll have color variations like with this guy that looks like a leaf that's already dying and kind of crumbled on the end. And then they have the craziest head. This Head formation changes almost like fingerprints. Every single one of them has a completely unique head and it's insane because for some reason they decided to go all out. My only guess to this is that the females must have some sort of bizarre selective sex breeding when it comes to these where they are selecting the cooler heads. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's the only thing I can think of because otherwise each one has a unique kind of, you know, all head situation. Um, but these particular ones, they'll have like, it'll bend left or right, or it'll kind of do like a crazy zigzag. It's all over the place. So I would say the ultimate most fun fact about them is that there is the most uniqueness on this species of all species I've seen for how many different variations of just like different features they have. Some of them look like rotten leaves that have holes in them. It's absolutely crazy. So huge fun fact for though, is that these guys are just weird. So should I buy them? That's going to depend entirely on whether or not you want to A, spend money, and B, have a future tragedy waiting to happen. 
they only live a year. So I would say if the answer to that is juice, my intrigue of the species exceeds my fear of them dying, then yeah, absolutely. They're not that expensive. As far as pet arthropods goes, they're actually one of the cheaper ones. And especially as far as mantids go, they're definitely one of the cheaper ones. They're very common in the hobby, so finding one is not going to be difficult. In fact, I'm going to have here for sale probably within the next three to four months, pending I don't screw it up. And as far as the actual pet, like the, I would say the enjoyment of the versus cost, you're going to get way more enjoyment than the cost. The only downside is that if you're used to, like, say, a cat, which is the easiest pet on planet Earth, then um, just lower your expectations a little bit for how much more needy these guys are than, say, your cat. So what will I need for purchasing them? Well, you're gonna need a cage. And first and foremost, you need that cage to not have necessarily a thin mesh. You need something like a tool cloth or anything like that that you can kind of put across the top. One thing that's very common in the hobby is that people will take the, um, you know, like any normal cage, they'll just kind of like super glue all the holes, like uh, you can't see the cages. But what I would really recommend is something like this, like an Amax box that you just kind of, now you're gonna want a bigger hole in these. These are only very temporary. And then you're gonna wanna put some sort of cheesecloth on the top of it because you need something that they can hang directly upside down. These guys don't hang on the sides and molt like some guys do, or some of the mantids do. They're gonna molt completely hanging upside down, which means you need to make sure they have something that their adorable little feet can hook into. And I don't even recommend this vent. You're gonna wanna put something else. Again, these are just temporary. So what I would recommend is something like an Amax box or anything like that you can modify. You can keep it cheap, it doesn't have to be crazy. Or you can get something from like say Zoomet or any of those giant cages. I've even seen like micro um, cage, micro habitats out there. You just need to make sure that it's just gonna have somewhere where they can hang upside down because that's where they're gonna spend 90% of the time. Put some fake plants in there if you feel necessary, but at the end of the day, they're not gonna give a shit. They do like to hide. Um, they're gonna feel safe regardless. They're not that smart. People put too much time and effort into their worry about the, their creature's um, happiness. As long as they can hang upside down and eat stuff, they don't care. Now, as far as the substrate, you need something that can hold humidity. Do not use cocoa fiber. Just blanket statement. I'm never going to recommend you use cocoa fiber ever. It's trash. Stop using it. It's cheap. That's the only reason why people use it. Um, it's just not good. So you're going to want to have something that can hold a lot of humidity in there. You're going to want to add springtails to it because what you don't want, because this is another con that I was going to tell you guys earlier, these guys are very susceptible to eye infections um, or infections in general, like into their, um, I'm going to use the word lungs, but that's not correct. Uh, so these guys can get breathing issues. So you're just going to want to make sure that whatever humidity you have, you offset that with some springtails that can kind of cut down on that fungus. And then last but not least for these guys, it's just make you have a variety of different feeders. You don't need to feed them the same thing. If you feed them the same thing all the time, that's fine. But when they are babies, they need to eat uh, fruit flies. They're, they're just too small when they're L1, L2. So you are going to have to stock up with the fruit flies in the beginning. They're going to get through that phase, I would say, within the first three months and be able to be fed um, smaller crickets, totally fine, or smaller dubias. You just you want to make sure that if you're doing that, you got some tongs because these guys are not going to eat them on their own. So I hope you liked our uh, Halloween spooktacular format. I know it was kind of thrown together last minute there, but so many of you had showed interest in the ghost mantis, and I will make another um, an actual care guide here in the future for them, as well as a care guide for the Halloween hissers. I just wanted to make sure that I have them available to uh, be sold here. So I would say within the next three months, you guys are going to be able to see them on my website. For now, I hope you enjoyed our episode. Again, like, subscribe, and hey, let me know what your thoughts are. If this is the first time you're seeing these species, I don't know how, but let's say it is. Maybe you guys enjoyed some of the footage. Maybe you like the format of this a little bit different than the normal ones that we do. I don't know. Get weird with it. Tell me what your thoughts are. Like and subscribe, and I hope to see you real soon.